A loader has a cycle time of four minutes. An individual dump truck with a capacity of 20 tons has a cycle time of 20 minutes. The soil has a unit weight of 2,850 pounds per cubic yard. How many trucks will be needed with this loader such that neither the truck nor the loader is kept waiting? And so there's quite a few pieces of information given here in the problem statement. You notice we have a cycle time for the loader of four minutes. We have a cycle time for our hauler, that is our dump truck of 20 minutes. We know we have a capacity here of our dump truck and we know the unit weight of the soil. So do we need each of those pieces of information? No, absolutely not. There's some extraneous information here that, that we don't even need um, because all they're asking us is how many trucks will be needed for this loader. And so that by definition is in balance. How many trucks do we assign to complete, to form a whole fleet with this one loader? That is the definition tried and true of imbalance. So imbalance is T haul divided by T loader. Look, the cycle times are given to us. We don't even need to add them up or calculate them. So T haul is 20 minutes. Again, that's given in the problem statement. The cycle time of a single dump truck is 20 minutes. T loader, <clears throat> cycle time of the loader is four minutes. So 20 divided by four is five. In balance is five. All is well. Life is good. I, based on these given conditions, I can get five dump trucks, assign them to this loader, and guess what? I have perfect harmony. Trucks are either loading, hauling, dumping, or returning. At no point in time is a truck going to be waiting. The loader is never going to be waiting for a truck to show back up to be loaded because I have a perfect, nice, even integer of five for my in balance. And so life is good. Well, guess what? In the real world, it is very rare that imbalance comes out to be a nice round even integer. So what do you do when imbalance is not that nice round even integer? Do you round it up or do you round it down? And so that's one thing we're going to look at here shortly. So let's look uh, at another example. <clears throat> right here on page 6-9, determine the productivity of the crew, one loader plus five dump trucks. Using the cycle time from the previous example and the following payload data, using an efficiency of 50 minutes per hour for both the payload of each truck is 20 tons. So we're going to first look at the productivity of the entire crew together. <clears throat> so first, let's calculate the productivity of a single truck. Productivity, payload divided by cycle time, multiplied by efficiency. So single truck, we're told, given information, it says the payload of the truck is 20 tons. So notice here, it's not in volume anymore. Payload does not always have to be in volume. It can absolutely be in terms of weight, especially for a dump truck. So payload of 20 tons divided by cycle time of 20 minutes. Don't forget to multiply that resultant by efficiency, which is 50 minutes per hour. And that arrives us at 20 tons per hour as our productivity of a single truck. <clears throat> so the productivity of five trucks together is going to be five trucks at 50 tons per hour each. We have the, the productivity capacity of 250 tons per hour for all of our trucks together. And lo and behold, guess what? The productivity of our loader is also 250 tons per hour because the loader has a payload of 20 tons because he's loading one truck. That is one cycle. And so 20 tons, he has a cycle time of four minutes. Again, applying that efficiency of 50 minutes per hour gives us a 250 tons per hour productivity load. So does it make sense that when in balance is a nice round even integer that our payload of our trucks matches the payload of our cycle time of our loader? Well, absolutely, because that's what we're moving towards is finding that efficiency where the productivity of our trucks exactly matches the productivity of our loader. No one has ever kept waiting. No, there's no downtime. All the machines are moving. You have a very efficient operation. Um, so while ideally there should be no idle time for either the loader or the truck, it is highly unlikely in practice. The number of trucks must be an integer value like we saw in five for imbalance in the previous example. But the value of imbalance will only rarely, if ever, be an integer. For example, let's take a quick example and look at, well, what if, T haul and T loader, when we divide that, doesn't give us a nice round even integer. So if T haul is 17, um, T loader is still 4, 17 divided by 4 to find imbal imbalance is 4.25. So when 4.25 is our imbalance, we're ordering trucks for that day's work. You call per year and say, hey man, I need uh, 4.25 trucks a day. He's going to laugh. Um, he's like, well, I can't send you a quarter of a truck, I can send you a whole truck. Um, he's like, how about I send you 10 trucks? And so 
you know, you probably recognize that you're probably not, not having your thinking cap on that day. But anyway, 4.25, you can't order a quarter of a truck. You can have four trucks, you can have five trucks, you can't have 4.25 trucks. So how many do you choose? And so a decision has to be made of, you know, if I only get four trucks, at some point my loader is going to be waiting because I don't have enough trucks to keep up with my loader. But if I order five trucks, at some point a truck's going to be waiting because the trucks are going to be operating quicker than they can't keep up. My loader can't keep up. So that's the decision that has to be made. And so we'll look at how that pans out here and a couple examples and how some considerations to be made for that uh, specific condition. Um, so in order to decide how many trucks to use, consider the following T-Haul divided by T-Loader. Uh, they're giving us a, a hauler cycle time of 21 minutes, a loader cycle time of five minutes. We have in balance of 4.2. If four trucks are used, the loader will be idle part of the time. If five trucks are used, some of the trucks will be kept waiting part of the time. If the trucks are waiting, productivity of the entire crew is limited by the maximum productivity of the loader. If the loader is waiting, productivity of the entire crew is limited by maximum productivity of the fleet of trucks. So therefore, based on that, we develop these definitions. So if in balance is not a nice even integer and you must choose how many trucks, you know, if you have an imbalance of 4.2, do you get four trucks or five trucks? If the number of trucks is less than imbalance, productivity is determined by the trucks. That is the productivity of that crew or that fleet is equal to the number of trucks multiplied by the productivity of one truck. So on the flip side, if the number of trucks you select is greater than in balance, productivity of the crew is determined by the loader. So if the number of trucks is greater than in balance, the productivity of the crew or the fleet is equal to the productivity of the loader. So if the, the optimum number of trucks to use in a crew is often based on minimizing cost or minimizing duration. So that's often the battle that we find ourselves facing. We wanna do it as economically efficient, also known as cheap. We wanna do it as cheap as possible or do we wanna do it as fast as possible. Sometimes, very often it can be hard to do both. So let's look at scenarios and how we want to make that decision.